You're listening to a podcast of Relatively Speaking on MPB Think Radio. To hear previous shows, visit mpbonline.org or download the MPB Public Radio app to listen on your iPhone or Android phone on demand. Good morning and thanks for listening. This is Relatively Speaking, the show all about you and your family. And I am Dr. Susan Buttress, Professor of Pediatrics at the University of Mississippi Medical Center. Well, we're told girls are strong, smart, powerful, and can be whatever they want to be. But they should be thin and sexy and demure, right? Girls should also speak up in class, speak up at work, but they can't be too assertive because then it's just aggressive. And no one wants to be around an aggressive woman, right? So our mixed messages are just dizzying. But, you know, I think boys get some of the same messages. What do you think? Are they taught to admire smart, successful young women? Or should they be the strongest, smartest, in control, the big, athletic, sexy man who who can do anything and never shows upset, emotion. It's okay to get angry and throw things about, but it's not okay to be tearful. So what I want to do is hear from you. How were you raised? What happened to you as you were growing up? What do you think we are doing to our young men and women and our young children as we're raising them? Are we raising them correctly? You know, until, believe it or not, 1993, um, marital rape was not a recognized crime. Um, If a woman was forced to have sex with a man within marriage, that was not a crime. Um, You know, equal pay. Um, although laws were written about equal pay and equal rights many years ago, we still have significant issues with that. So why do you think that is going on? And um, there was a, a 2000 Harris poll done um, that, that looked at girls and asked girls in grades third to through the 12th about gender stereotypes, their quality of life, kind of their plans for the future. And I thought this was interesting. Over 50% of girls said people think girls are only interested in love and romance. Um, And almost 60% of girls said they were told not to brag about what they could do well because it wasn't ladylike. Again, over 60% said in school, boys think that they have a right to talk about other girls' bodies or girls' bodies um, in front of the girls. So, you know, that was that was 20 years ago. Do you think things have really changed? There haven't been any really good recent surveys about that type of thing lately. Um, many of you know that yesterday was International Women's Day. It's a global holiday celebrated on March 8th to commemorate um, the cultural, political, and socioeconomic achievements of women and to kind of point out women's rights movement and thus. And I don't really want this show to be about that today. I mean, obviously, there have been many great women over the years and all aspects of life, Joan of Arc, Madame Curie, Susan B. Anthony, Rosa Parks, Sandra Day O'Connor, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, uh, Ginsburg. I can go on and on. Um, But what made, what I want to talk about today is what made those women able to be great? Why did they step out? How did they have the confidence to be contributors to our society? You know, Um, you've heard the cliche that behind every great man, there's a woman. How did it, how, how were these women able to, to step out and not be behind a great man, which is honorable and wonderful. Don't get me wrong. I think we all need support from significant others. And, and many times 
we all are made greater by our partner. But, but what made those women step out and have the guts basically to, to be their own person? Um, I really want to hear from our listeners. You know, I always tell you guys um, that, that you make the show. So I need you to call in and tell us, how were you raised? Why do you think um, we continue to try to put women in a different light? What do you think is going on? Give us a call at one eight seven seven mpb ring That's 877-672-7464. Or you can send an email to family at mpbonline.org. Well, I want to bring our producer, my producer in, Michelle McAdoo. She and I had a bit of a talk. Obviously, Michelle's a woman, as I am. And, you know, um, we, we talked a bit about preparing this how, and, and wanted to frame it as how do we raise our girls to be confident um, and able to think that they can do anything and how do we raise our boys to be successful and treating women appropriately um, and how do we not talk about one sex being greater than the other Michelle I don't know if you want to jump in and make a couple of comments as we're moving along well good morning everyone good morning Dr. Buttress this is a great topic um, being uh, women's history month all month long in March and of course like you mentioned yesterday was International Women's Day how do we teach our young kids to not look at the world as men versus women and is it possible to have a world where we don't see men and women as separate? We see them as equal. They're and partners. Right, right, and partners. I really want to hear from our, our audience today. Uh, we have the first vice president, female vice president ever in the history of America. That's wonderful, and we're making strides slowly, but there's more to do. Yeah, and again, this is not about um, putting one one gender over another it's looking at why do we why have we not been able to look at men and women as partners and equals that's where I continue to to just wonder um, why is it so hard you know we weren't always like this back if you go way back in time when we were hunter gatherers in general hunter gatherers we what what we found was that women and men were kind of equal they the you know female and male genders were they both hunted they gathered they actually participated in child rearing, child care for. And once we got into our agricultural society is when there seemed to be a shift where men would go to the fields, they would do the work in the fields, women would take care of the home place, take care of the kids and the cooking. And then it gradually seemed to get more and more in that direction where there was a very designated job that women did and they stayed in their place. And then there were jobs that men did. So All right. before Let's, we go, to, should we? well, I had a question when you, you're talking about okay. caveman days. Um, it's interesting you say that because what Flintstones and the media portrays pictures and things like that, what we learn in the textbooks in school, you see the caveman with the woman dragging her by the hair. Remember that mm -hmm. picture? Yep. Yep. <laughs> so not so much. Exactly. Yeah. But but what yeah. we're saying is those images of what we've seen in the past is what makes the world like it is today. We're we're gonna have to change those images of men being the superheroes of the women and the women being passive and meek and mild. I know I'm getting a lot of people ears burning right now because a lot of people feel that that's how it should be. And I want to know why. Why do you think it should be yeah. that way? So we're talking about raising girls to be confident and independent, raising boys to be respectful and caring. 
and allowing boys maybe to have emotions too. Let's keep talking about this. This is Relatively Speaking. I'm Dr. Susan Buttress here with Michelle McAdoo, and we'll be right back. Hi, I'm Dr. Susan Buttress. Parents are a child's first teacher. Children make connections to the growing world around them through back and forth interactions. Parents and other caregivers can help children learn communication and social emotional skills by talking, reading, and singing each day. More information at MississippiThrive.com. This is an MPB Think Radio podcast. Welcome back and thanks for listening. This is Relatively Speaking. I'm Dr. Susan Buttress here with Michelle McAdoo. And we are talking about how we raise girls and boys. And do we raise them to think that they should be treated as equals if as partners, or do we raise them to think that they should be treated differently? Um, so let's go on to the phones. We have Bobby from Pontotoc. Hey, Bobby, thanks for holding. How are y'all doing this morning? I got a question. Well, let me first say I work with an organization called Polaris who tries its best to uh, get something done about these people selling these five and six year old girls at truck stops and around in Mississippi and we have got oh. some laws passed to uh, do something about this but it seemed like some of the law enforcement ain't enforcing the laws but that wasn't what I wanted to talk about what I wanted to talk about was uh, it's hard to tell how to treat a woman appropriately when you're working I've worked at places where women were always flirting with me and acting sexy with me and pinching me on the butt and all that kind of stuff, and they never thought nothing about it. And one one place I was working, I had four people working on the machine with them, four women, and they was always carrying on with me and acting crazy and talking sexy. Then I had one woman on that machine. She was a Southern Baptist or something or other. She kept complaining about to the management about me mistreating the women and lower rating them and all that. And I can't figure out what you do about a situation like that. How are you gonna how are you gonna <laughs> get along with people when part of them's going one direction and part of them the other direction? <laughs> <laughs> oh, Bobby, you threw out so many good thoughts and questions. Let me, first of all, thank you for working with that organization to try to prevent the sexual trafficking. That is such a serious problem and something that um, we we will talk about on this show soon because that that is a big issue. So thank, thank you for your work in that. Um, so... Back to, to your, your question about how women expect to be treated and yet it, treat some women do exactly what you are talking about. They act, um, they're very sexualized in the workplace, which is not appropriate. They um, literally harass men, and we know that happens. Um, we also know, I'll say, that I think so many times people do pull the gender card um, about being mistreated when it's in reality job performance. But if you feel like you're, you have treated people fairly and documented it fairly and only uphold people to the work standards, uh, again, I think if women expect to be treated equally, in the workplace, they need to expect to do an equal job. And I think most of us do that. I'm not sure that all of us do that. I would suspect not. We know that um, there are people out there in every profession who don't do the best job they can. So, um, you know, from I would just say to you, Bobby, that you've, you've made a couple of good points. 
um, that if you're not supposed to, if you're supposed to be upheld to certain standards, then the other gender should be upheld to certain standards. And that's just the way it should be. So I, I hope that made sense. I know it's going to generate some more calls, Bobby. So thank you for starting us off. Well, um, I said when questions. I called in, I was probably going to get a fire started, but I, I actually I was working at one place and about three or four women was talking sexy to me and, and one of the other women went and reported her. So at break time, these three women that was talking to me went and jumped on her and beat her up. <laughs> so that was... Oh, my goodness. I, that's a mess. That's, uh, I, mean, I hope management um, got involved because that's that's a terrible thing. But we know that people who try to uphold standards... Um, and, and again, I hope you got involved, too. Um, I think it's appropriate when people start acting inappropriate at work to turn around, say that's not appropriate, and I'm not comfortable with that behavior. I think if we would all speak more directly to people and let them know what our standards are, perhaps it would sort of nip things in the bud, although we certainly, I know violence in the workplace exists. I'm sorry to hear that. Okay, Bobby. Thank, thank you very much for the information. Well, I, I hope you. I didn't set the wood on fire. I don't know. We'll see. Um, we have two more callers. I'm going to go on to David from Clinton and see what David has to say. Hi, David. Thanks for calling. Hey, uh, thank you for letting me speak. Um, so one thing that I think we'll have to to kind of look at as a society going forward is 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 the education fitting the the challenges that we're facing so if you know we're talking about raising boys and girls in an environment where you know we're going to teach each child a, you know a set a separate set of tools um you have to look at like why you would be separating the tools for girls versus boys i think like a long time ago you know going back at least a few thousand years it was a lot easier to say okay you know because girls are going to end up usually having or, be, you know, be involved with small groups of family members, like dealing with child care. And then you have mm -hmm. the males that were, you know, previously, you know, going out and solving, you know, very physical technical challenges like, you know, building bridges or, you know, engineering or, you know, what other types of, you know, things needed to be done that required a lot of strength. I think on average, obviously you can have females that are stronger and have males that are stronger, but it tends at least back then, it was very easy to say, okay, we have these problems. They need to be solved by this people group rather than this people group because, you know, of this, you know, tendency to be able to be able to be physical. I think because you're seeing a reduction in um, the tasks that, ab like, absolutely demand a very, very strong difference of group of, uh, capability because of strength, you're going to see that strength mm -hmm. because of things like machinery, because of things like, you know, uh, any type of automated equipment, think, uh, like, like, you know, working on a car, you used to have to literally turn a wrench. Now you have a, you know, a right electric tool to do such. And so as that decreases, as you have to say, okay, well, these jobs are going to be, you know, set apart. Well, anybody can turn a wrench now because all you have to do is click a button. And so things are only going to be, you know, changed based off of how smart you are, essentially. And because you don't see half as much variance between, you know, males and females when it comes to actual intellectual tasks, like you have female mathematicians, you have female physicists, you have, you know, go on down the list. Previously, I think it was easy to say, oh, well, because men are usually used to facing these technical challenges, you know, intellectually, there was kind of a, a bias for saying, well, because men are, you know, out there doing these technical challenges, they're the ones that are experienced with them, we're going to pass that intellectual burden off onto the males just as well. And so then you had this bias of, oh, well, males do the intellectual challenges because they have to because that's out in the, you know, the technical world. And so going forward, I think figuring out, okay, well, we, we're really only left with these technical challenges, but they don't require strength. You know, now we're saying, okay, hey, you know, women seem to be quite capable of that, as they always actually have been. It was just kind of an assumption because of the bias, because of the, you know, going out and being right. able to do only technical things. So going forward, it's like, hey, if we're teaching our children what they can and can't do or should and shouldn't do, you know, it, un, un, you know, everything suggests that males and females are actually pretty much equally intelligent. And so at least on average, obviously, you have males that are smarter than females and you have females that are smarter than males, and you can have that interplay of, you know, 
uh, individuals can be different, but, you know, if we're saying, hey, as a, as a rule, let's teach our kids, you know, what they should be doing and, and, you know, what they should be learning, let's try to focus on, oh, okay, well, we're really only focused on, you know, intellectual tasks at this point. Now, you're still going to have physical tasks, and maybe, you know, there is a tendency right. for males to fill those positions, but anything else, you're sitting there going, okay, maybe, maybe we should actually try to increase opportunities for women in these fields because, those type of biases have no reason to exist anymore, if that makes sense. It makes a lot of sense. And I hope our listeners were listening to you because you made several good points. And 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 I will say in our society, you know, back in the day, Barbie, the Barbie doll would say things like, oh, math is so hard. I can't do math. Um, girls tended to not be given tasks for puzzle solving or building or the like, and whereas boys were. And, you know, as we've talked about a lot, if you don't practice a skill set, you don't, you don't develop the neural pathways to, re, to, to become good at it. You don't lay down the myelinization on those pathways in your brain to help you know how to do that skill set. So if you never work with puzzles, you never work with design, then you don't become good at puzzles and design. And do some of us have innate skills that are that are better than others? Yes. I mean, you know, I I have a an administrative um, person in my office who a woman who is an accountant and she's amazing with numbers and does a fabulous job. I'm better in science than she is. Um, we have our individualized skill set. And, and you're absolutely right. Um, if you think about it, the woman who is on our autocorrect show is, is, and who leads it is a mechanic She's and knows a ton about cars. Um, she does not have to have a whole lot of brute strength because of the uh, electric equipment and all of that kind of stuff that's available, like David said. So, you know, um, back in the day, yes, there it, are men typically um, stronger than women, yes, because of testosterone and because of the ability to build more muscle. Women can become quite strong with weightlifting and other things, but in general, naturally, um, men are going to be a little bit bigger and a little bit stronger. So I think you made so many good points, David, and um, I, I think some of the issue is what parents do and how parents model. And my question to our listeners is, how are you doing with modeling? Um, how did your parents do with modeling that you could do something? Men can be clothes designers. Um, women can be architects and builders. Women can be engineers. Men can be nurses. There have been such ridiculous, stereotypical gender assignment to things that is one, not fair to individuals, um, but, but two, ri ridiculous. Um, all right. Um, being told we need to take our next break, so we will. We have Mark from Starkville on the phone, but we also have open lines, and I'd really love to continue to hear from you. We've had some excellent points made by our callers. Give us a call at one eight seven seven mpb ring that's 877-672-7464. We're talking about how we, how we assign gender tasks and how is it fair or not. How we treat women. How do we treat men? This is Relatively Speaking. We'll be right back. The entire foundation of your child's brain is being built in the first five years of life. This construction is strengthened through the child's interactions with others. Hi, I'm Dr. Susan Buttress. The good news is you have what it takes to be a brain builder. Learn more at MississippiThrive.com.
This is an MPB Think Radio podcast. Welcome back and thanks for listening. I'm Dr. Susan Buttress here with Michelle McAdoo, and we are talking about gender differences, um, treating women that they can be strong and powerful, treating men that women can be their equal partners, um, respecting each other and respecting each other's skill sets. We want to hear from you. We've got some callers on the line, but we have open lines. You can give us a call at 877-MPB-RING. That's 877-672-7464. Mark has been waiting from in Starkville. Hi, Mark. Thanks for waiting. No, no problem. How are y'all? Doing great. Tell us what your thoughts are. Yeah, I may have tuned in a little bit late, so I wanted to go back to some of the early topics y'all were covering um, about raising young boys and young girls. I have uh, a young boy, eight years old, and then two young girls. And what I want to talk about is what my wife and I have focused on because we, we try to you know fight some of these stereotypes and just give you a couple of experiences we've had. The one issue we, we've often had with our young girls, and of course they like to dress up in princess outfits and while my son dresses up as a knight with his swords, but we encourage them to take up the sword themselves and sword fight with him. And oftentimes, just the other day, one of them was playing like she was stranded and asking, you know, asking her big brother to come save her, you know, kind of the damsel in distress, you know, model. Right. And yeah. we told her, we said, no, sweetie, save yourself, you know, find a way out. And she told me she was trapped in a castle. And I said, find a way out. You can, you can get out yourself. And she looked at me kind of funny. And then we kept pushing her to do it. And then a few minutes later, she came screaming, I did it. I did it. I found a way out. I saved myself. And you know, we kind of encouraged <laughs> that because we don't want her to rely, as sweet as it is to rely on your big brother, we don't want her to think she has to be saved by uh, anyone, especially uh, a male. So we, we, we work a lot with that. Uh, another example we've had is for Christmas presents, my mother, and I don't think she meant anything by it, but she got my son a science kit and got my girls a little kitchenette set. And we joked. Mm-hmm. We joked about how, you know, you know, the girls can have science kits as well. And, of course, for the next gift-giving period, she got them both the girls' science kits. And, we've, you know, we've got them in lab coats with their goggles on, mixing up brown sugar and water to encourage them that, you know, they can, they can do those tasks as well, just as, as well as, as their brother can. And then the last thing I want to mention with uh, is back to boys. You know, we've had some friends of ours and family members, you know, joke about our son if he plays with the girls' Barbies or the girls' Barbie dolls. And we think it's a great thing that he plays with Barbies and Barbie dolls. And someone told us somewhere, you know, let them play with babies. They may end up being a doctor or a pediatrician or, you know, there's nothing wrong with little boys playing with what are considered feminine toys. And we may be in a better world right now if more young boys understood, you know, some of the boundaries associated with, with, with playing with females. And that brings up my last point, and then I'll, I'll be quiet. We really emphasize that no means no, even when you're playing for both the boys and the girls. If they're wrestling and having a good time, if one of them says no, even if kids often do, they're joking like they they say no, but they don't really mean. They want you to keep tickling them. Once the word no is is uttered, all hands are off. And we try to reinforce that at an early age with our children that it doesn't matter what you think they mean. If the word no came out of their mouth, that game is over. And so just – I just want to give you all some of the experiences we've had about raising boys and girls, and hopefully that stimulates uh, some additional discussion. Wow, Mark. All I can say is you and your wife sound like awesome parents, and I can't imagine that your children are not going to have a great outcome. It, you're doing exactly what you should do. Um, and I loved, I loved the damsel in distress, love her escaping from the castle. How old was she when she did that? That was this weekend. She was she's four years old. Four years old. And see, that's exactly when four is sort of that demarcation when young children start learning how to get embarrassed about what they can or cannot do. They can they start needing even more emphasis on empowering them and teaching them to be confident in themselves because that's when they start noticing that other people are noticing them before that if you think about it as a a toddler or two three year old they typically are oh just so comfortable with themselves and love performing in front so 
um, great time to keep reinforcing um, expectations. And then I love your no means no. Uh, I think if we taught our children that very early to draw that line, we would have much less bullying, much less difficulty with um, children, not just in the sexual abuse nature, but, but in general, to be able to draw a line and know that you, it's okay to say no, and then when someone says no to you, stop it. Um, instead of having to file court cases and do this and do that, just learn how to stop when somebody says stop. Mark, that was very valuable. Thank you so much for calling. No problem. My wife gets all the credit. (laughs) I bet it's a partnership. That's what it sounds like. All right. Well, let's stay on the phone. Sue from Beaumont. Hi, Sue. We're going to hear from a woman. Yes. uh, I'd like to make a comment about something. And this is not from a religious standpoint, but I, I I don't agree with women being in the military as far as being uh, on the front lines and on the battle line, and, and leaving their children behind to be raised by grandparents or parents or, or babysitters, they, they, I think their place is there with the children not being out in the front lines of battle. That's just my opinion. Hmm. And also, there, there, there's something on Facebook about this transgender uh, male. He transgendered into female, and then he's a boxer, and these women are getting in the ring with him, and he's caused up. Uh, a skull fractures to two women already, but then I got thinking, why are women boxing anyway? That's not say it's not a male female pursuit, but that just that just didn't seem right to me. Two two interesting opinions, Sue, and um, you know I I would love to hear from listeners about what the 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 two points Sue just made. Um, I'll just comment on one, women on the front lines versus men on the front lines. Um, You know, fathers, are they less important to their children than the mothers? That's just a question I'll throw out there. And um, and then the other uh, question I want to throw out is with a, a transgender individual, Typically, transgender individuals um, take hormones, estrogen, and others to try to diminish the testosterone. Testosterone is what is pretty key in um, muscle mass and muscle making. Um, I think there is a lot of controversy in that area, Sue, and I'd love to hear from our listeners about that. I don't have right answers um, there for either one, but thanks for calling. I'm going to give the number out right now because I bet there's a listener out there who wants to talk about the two points you just made. That's one eight seven seven mpb ring 877-672-7464. Well, let's stay on the phone. We have Annie from Jackson. Um, hi, Annie. I wanted to get to your call before the next break. Hello. Um, so, but my thoughts uh, go back to the gentleman that was on before the last caller. Uh-huh. Uh, I think that uh, children are influenced by fairy tales that they were up with and also by television shows that they watch. Who's portrayed as heroes that goes in to save the people? And right. my last comment is general about women and men. I think globally goes back to religious teaching that is very much embedded into our our social thinking about what a woman should do and what a man should do. Annie, you, you've made two really good points, and, and I, I'll just summarize quickly that, you know, the fact that many times children are influenced by fairy tales, and, and you know, a lot of the Disney movies and and all are, are about damsels in distress, um, princes coming to save um, 
women, uh, making them become apprentices. Uh, I will say that there has been an evolution in shows, and I was watching Moana, which is a lovely movie about a young woman being empowered um, by her grandmother's encouragement um, and her mother's encouragement and actually her father. And so I, 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 I do, I agree with you. I think there, in the, in the past, there's been a lot, there still is a lot of that in influence out there that, that many times happens. And, and, you know, I think there's the stereotypical issue. And then in some religions, certainly uh, women are taught to be subservient. Uh, that is for sure. And um, some of it was when the establishment of the religions was many, many years ago when, when it was such a patriarchal society and, and it's just continued. So I think your points are really good and I appreciate you calling Annie. Um, I'm going to, if I think we need to stay on the phone and skip the last break because we have several callers. So let me go next to Rachel from Starkville. Hi, Rachel. Good morning, Doctor. Hope you're well and hope you are, Michelle. I just want to make an observation that things are changing uh, for the good, but um, slowly. And mm -hmm. your previous caller made a point, was talking about uh, television shows and movies. And my comment is along the same line in that um, women in the old black and white movies were weak uh, mentally and physically. They were afraid of the things that go bump in the night. Um, mm -hmm. And a man always came to the rescue. Um, today, women in movies are smart, capable, and strong, but just like uh, in the old movies, they still have to be beautiful and sexy. And I mm -hmm. think this is a real uh, handicap for, or a burden for women to have to try to overcome uh, to be physically attractive all of the time. And uh, in real life, we still have terrible violence perpetrated against women uh, in the real world, and we still have a long way to go. It's just a messy evolution. Some really great points, and and you're you're absolutely right. We still have a long way to go, and a messy evolution is a good descriptive because I think we've made such incredible progress, and then we take a few steps backwards sometimes. So I think if we can all just keep working toward the moving forward and demanding that women and men are put in a respectful light and that we, we stop having ridiculous stereotypical uh, presentations of what a, an attractive man should be or an attractive woman and just realize that everybody has their value. So I think you made some great points, uh, Rachel. Well, thank, thank you for, for taking my call. Thank you. All right. We have next online Bob from Gulfport. Hi, Bob. Hey, how's it going? Good. Tell us what your thoughts are about this so, topic. Yeah, so your last caller actually was a perfect segue into my question, which is, mm -hmm. you know, over the last 40 or 50 years of, as uh, our culture has transitioned from men being protectors and providers of their family and of the society to more of an equal um, equal um, um, roles um, like they like they do today predominantly. I, I'm wondering if what's your thoughts on that impacting the the amount of dramatic uh, increase in violence against women uh, and sexual assault specifically. It seems to those those issues have. Uh, dramatically increased over the last decade or two. I was wondering your thoughts on that. 
Oh, gosh. Um, Bob, that's a really good question. Do you think it's a dramatic increase or do you think that it's more out in the forefront and we're hearing about it more? I, I wonder about that. Um, you know, now uh, there is all kinds of work being done on domestic violence. Uh, there is all kinds of work being done on sexual harassment. So we hear a whole lot about it now. Um, I am curious, and, and honestly, uh, your question is a great one. Is it truly a dramatic increase, or is it that we are just, because of media, because of social media and, um, you know, all the different formats that we have, and then more talk radio than we've ever had before, I think, and and all. Do you do you think it perhaps is due to that? And I'm throwing that question back to you, Bob. Well, um, I don't know. You're the expert on this. Uh, <laughs> I was hope, hopefully, hopefully you can quote some numbers there on the uh, the trends. I mean, it's it's science, right? Yeah. Uh, it's something we should be able to track. Yeah. Well, the trends, like you said, there's more being reported for sure. And um, no, no doubt about that. Now, one reason that we know that, you know, any times you're in times of stress, there's increase in, um, in violence in general against any gender, against each other, you know, men and women. Um, but I think as as far as looking at the trends, yes, they are absolutely up if you look at, at graphs. Mm -hmm. um, what I try to always do as a scientist is look at is it is it real or is it a difference in reporting process? And and honestly, I'm not sure that we clearly know, other than during this pandemic and during times of stress always violence goes up across the board. We, we do know that happens. Yeah. Um, so when I was raised, so, um, I was taught I, you never, ever uh, hit a, a girl, hit a woman. Mm -hmm. Like it doesn't matter mm -hmm. what they do to you. You never touch them. That's what I was taught. And I'm wondering if as we're taught more and more to treat women as equals, if that uh, or we're teaching our kids to treat uh, females as equals, if that's leading to, well, if I hit a boy because they're, they're fighting with them. Is it okay for me to hit a girl if I'm fighting with her? Hmm. Now that's a really good question. And I don't know how well that's been looked at. That might be another great area of study. If, if yeah. that has to do uh, more with it, Michelle is, has made a comment to me that um, maybe back in the day, it was okay for a man to hit his wife. And and now it's not okay, and so we hear more about it now. If we're talking about years and years ago, but I I will look into that because that's a really good point that you make. Um, I'm not sure that that's what's going on. I think it has more to do with the the violence, but um, and the the stress going on. But anyway. Thank you for that call and that question. All right. Well, I think we have time for one more caller, and we have, is it Ela from Memphis? Yes, it is. Hi, how are you? Um, Hi. I, I, have, I have two points to make. I, had a, I was at a dinner party with a bunch of people, and one of them was a doctor, and he was with his wife, and he was talking about his daughter, which was in med school. And the conversation led to a point where he turned around and said, well, I've told her that, you know, and keep in mind, she's in med school, you know, she's going to have to choose at some point whether she wants to be a mother or a doctor. And I mm. couldn't believe my ears. I'm like, you're paying for your daughter to go to med school. And so I just asked him very, well, tactlessly maybe, <laughs> and then when did you decide to become a father or a doctor? Did anybody ask you that question? And he didn't have an answer, of course, so yay me. Um, the other thing wow. I was going to say <laughs> was, uh, you know, the same movies that we are, that we are so concerned about uh, women being de depicted as weak are showing boys as aggressors. 
right? So there's like two right. sides to a coin. I honestly don't, and I'm, you know, I may be wrong, but I don't think we talk about that side of the coin as much as we should, you know, because, you know, you see, I don't know, let's take Casablanca, you know, Lauren Bacall, and she just melts in Humphrey Bogart's arms when he forcibly kisses her. That's not how it works in real life. And this is ongoing, you know, and, and we don't really address that as much as women should be stronger, you know, putting right. burden back on women. Right. Great. Great questions. And and you're you're absolutely right that in movies, if women are the weak, uh, typically men are the aggressors. I want to go back to your point. Yay for you. I have to say at the dinner party, asking the doctor if he chose to be a father or a doctor, um, because that that's all wrong. And if you have partnership in, in a relationship and in parenthood, then women can, can do whatever. I, I have a wonderful partner in my spouse. I am a physician, a very busy physician over the last 35 years. And I have five children and 11 grandchildren, and I think they're all attached to me. And I'm pretty sure they think I was an okay mother. You can do both um, and still not um, have to be superwoman if you have an equal partner who helps out. So uh, you, you made um, wonderful points. Thank you so much. I just want to throw out some reminders, listeners. First of all, thank you so much for our callers. Well, like I said, you make the show. Um, but when we're looking at, at our kids, as we're raising them, talk about good qualities in general, the skills, the intelligence, the character, the personality, the strength and the kindness, the things that you want your children to develop. They happen in both boys and girls. Sensitivity, loving, caring, those all happen in boys and girls. And then just be a good model. If you model the right kind of behavior, you will get the right kind of behavior. So thanks, everybody. If you'd like to hear this show again or any past episodes, you can listen to the podcast on your favorite podcast app by searching Southern Remedy, Relatively Speaking. This show is a production of MPB Think Radio and engineered by Michelle McAdoo. I'm Dr. Susan.